If you've ever wondered about the Java math library, then I have got the video for you. Today I'm gonna show you what every single method in the Java math library does for you, so you can use them pretty easily instead of struggling through documentation like I did. How's it going? My name's Alex. I make Java tutorials on this channel every single week. I've got a lot of videos on my channel already, but if you're new here and it's something you might be interested in seeing, then consider subscribing. Whoopa! We are in Eclipse. Let's just make a new Java project by going to File, New Java Project. Call it Math. Math is fun. Hit Finish here. Right click it and go to New Class. We'll name this and then we'll start learning what those math library methods are. We'll just name it math. It's cool. If you name it just math, I think that might cause some errors in your program. It might be confused between the class name and the package for math, but just try to name it something different. Click this public static void main checkbox and then hit finish. The math library in Java is just a bunch of Java code that they wrote for us to make it easier for us to do math, like calculate exponents, cosine, tangent, things like that. And it's built into Java, which is pretty great. So to start using it, to start using all those magical math functions that they have, we're just gonna type math dot to bring up everything that the math library can do. And I'm gonna go through every single one of these. I'm gonna go in order, alphabetical order. So if you have one, that you're really interested in learning about, then you can skip to that section of the video. But we'll start by doing math.class and throwing that in a print statement. We'll print out math.class, see what that does. And that just brings up class, java.lang.math. This is a variable inside of the math library that tells you what class it is and where the corresponding code is. We'll move on to the next one, math.e. Math.e will print out that magic value e, which is very useful in calculus and other areas. And so that's set to 2.718281828. So every time you need to use that variable, instead of typing it out, you can just call math.e. Next, we've got math.pi. And this is the same thing, it has pi in there for you, rounded to 15 decimal places. And if you hover over it, you can see the type. And you see here that this variable is a double, which can hold a lot of decimal places. It is very useful for numbers like pi. So you can use this for your circle calculations if you need to. Let's move on to the next one. Looks like we're done with all the variables here. Um, how I can tell that is by these little icons. So the tiny ones are uh, values and then the big green circles look like methods. So I'll click abs here and this is the absolute value. So you can do math.abs to calculate the absolute value of something. So say negative 12, if we do that then we'll see the absolute value is 12. If we do like positive 18 then the absolute value will be 18. This will work with decimals as well 18.2, 18.2. And that's actually why, if we do math dot again, that's why you see four different absolute value functions here. One for double, one for float, one for int, and one for long. Those all do the same thing. Gives you the absolute value. Trucking on a long, we've got a cos. What could that do? Well, that's actually the cosine of a value. So like 0.54, and I'm sorry, not the cosine value, the arc cosine value and it'll return the angle for you between zero and pi. If you put in a number here that's outside of the range between zero and one, so like 1.1, it'll return NAN, not a number. It can actually be, be between negative one and one. So any number between that range will work. So that's a cos arc cosine. After that, we can move on to add exact. This will add numbers for you and eliminate rounding errors. It works for both the integer values and long values. Moving on to a sine, arc sine, any value between negative one and one will work. Arc tangent is the same thing. It will return the arc tangent for you. 
like so. A tan 2 is arctangent squared. This is the angle of an xy point and the positive x-axis. So we can say there's a point in space that's like 6, 3, and we get the angle. It converts those rectangular coordinates xy into polar coordinates r theta for you. After arctangent squared, we've got CBRT. That's the cube root. So if we put a 9 in there, save it and run it, then we get 2.08. Let's see what else has a cube root. I know that 8 does. 8's cube root is 2, and there we get 2. Next, seal. This is very useful because it will get the sealing value of whatever you put in. So if I put 2.3, that will return a 3. It will round it up, and that can be very useful. This one is overcomplicated, I think, and it just takes the sign of the second number and puts it on the first number. So if we say like positive 4 and negative 2, then it gets negative 4. It takes the sign of the second number and puts it on the first. So if this was positive and then negative, then we'd get positive 4. That works for both doubles and floats. Cos is the cosine between negative 1 and 1. Like so, you put in your angle in radians and it'll return the cosine for you. Cosh will return the hyperbolic cosine and it's defined by this formula right here. So you can get the hyperbolic cosine of your number in radians like that. This is really great because you don't have to calculate it all in Java. It just does it for you. That's actually extremely convenient. Decrement exact will decrement the value by 1. So if I can do 9, and it will give me 8. That works for both integers and longs. By the way, if you're a little confused on the difference between longs, ints, doubles, and floats, you can see that on the screen now, where I go into in-depth on the difference between all four of those, once and for all, so you have no confusion. Exp is the variable e, that magic number e from earlier at 2.718 raised to this power. So if we raise it to the power of 1, then we get the original. If we raise it to the power of 2, then you get the idea. Exp m1 returns the value of this formula. So it's e to the x minus 1. So if we have e to the 1 minus 1, we should get like 1.718. Yeah, 1.718, because that's just e to the 1 minus 1. So can, you can use this to use pretty cool equations very simply through the math library. We've got floor. This is just like seal the ceiling, except we're going to round it down to the bottom. So if I have like 6.999, since it's on the floor, we're going to round it down to 6. Floor div is dividing x by y, <coughs> and then taking that value to the floor. So if we divide 5 by 2, the answer is 2.5, but since we're flooring it, the answer will spit out 2, like that. That works with both ints and longs. Floor mod will do x mod y and return the floor of that. So if I did 5 mod 2, the remainder is 1. The floor is 1 is still 1. So we get 1. Floor mod also works with both ints and longs. Get exponent will return the unbiased exponent of a number. And I honestly don't know what that is, um, but if we put in 64, then we get 6, and I guess that's the unbiased exponent. I'm sorry I wasn't too useful on that. I, I don't really understand that one too well. But that may be an off case um, if you need to use that one. That one works for both doubles and floats. Hypot will get the hypotenuse of an x and y value. 3 and 4 should return a hypotenuse of 5. So if we go 3 on the x, 4 on the y, hypotenuse is 5. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 25 equals 16 plus 9. We have i, e, 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 remainder. 
This is just like mod, except it uses this I E E E standard of calculating remainders. So if I put in like 5.4, 3.1, we'll calculate the remainder using that standard, and that's the remainder. It says the remainder is mathematically equal to the first value minus the second value times n, where n's the mathematical quotient, and that's the formula. Ooh, there are more than I expected. <laughs> it was good for you. Good for the people using math library. Increment exact, this is just adding one, so if we put eight in there, it'll return nine. That works for integers and longs. We've got log, this takes the logarithm, so if we put math.e inside of here and take the log of e, then we get one. Dude, my math, like being able to use calculus again is like, whoa. Moving on, log 10, this is the log base 10, say like 12, <clears throat> we get the log base 10 results. Log 1p is the natural logarithm of the sum of the argument in one. Math.max will return the maximum of two values. So if we have 98 <coughs> and we have 222, then it'll print out the max, which is 222. Math.max will work for doubles, floats, ints, and longs. Math.min here will get the minimum value. So if we have three, and five, it'll bring back three. Math.min works for doubles, floats, ints, and longs too. Multiply exact, we'll multiply these two numbers exactly. Two and three is six. The difference between regular multiplication using the asterisk, regular subtraction, and regular division, all that. The reason why there's math.multiply exact is because it'll throw an exception and tell you if the value overflows. That's the only difference there. You know, I think regular ones do that too. I can't remember. Might just be more organized that way. Multiply exact works with integers and longs. Negate exact. This will take this value and turn it negative. If you put a negative number in here, then it'll come back positive since two negatives make a positive. That works for integers and longs. Next, after. So I started looking this one up and I can't actually figure out what this one is. A float is your start and the double is the second one. So it looks like the first number goes down a few floating point values based on the second number. If anyone in the comments knows about this one, please let me know in the comments to help some other people out if they want to use next after. But it looks like it's mostly just the first number down a few floating points based on the second number. Sorry for that, that one was a little confusing. That works for both double double and float double. We have next down, which gets a few floating point values down. That works for doubles and floats as well. Next up, these are all very similar. I'm starting to see a pattern here. I do 53, then we get a few floating point values up. We're almost done everybody, almost done. We've got pow. This calculates exponents. We can do three to the power of four, that's 81. Two to the power of three is eight. Random, this will generate a random number between zero and one. Our int will turn a double value into an integer. It'll do the closest one, so if it's 4.3, it'll go down to four. If it's 4.6, it'll go up to five. Rounds will do the same thing. It'll round up or down. So this one should round up to seven. Four, nine, nine, nine. We'll round down to six. That works for both doubles and floats. Scal B will return a number D times two to the scale factor. So if we have a number two, this will be two times two to the power of one will bring four. So we got four. If we want three times two to the power of two, That'll be three times four, which is 12. So we'll just return that equation answer. That works for both doubles and floats. Sig num will return the significant number. So if it's positive, it'll return one. If it's negative, it'll return negative one. And if it's zero, it'll return zero. Sign will return the sign 
between negative 1 and 1, just like before. We're very used to these ones because there's a lot of these in the math library. Next in the Java math library is sine h, which is the hypotenuse sine. So we can do the same thing and we get the sine hypotenuse, sorry, hyperbolic sine. I sounded like an idiot. Hyperbolic squirt will get you a Squirtle Pokemon for free. Now it gets the square root of a number. We've got nine, I return three. Subtract exact, we'll subtract the two numbers. Say, subtract nine and two, we'll get seven. That works for integers and longs. Tangent, we'll bring you the tangent, just like the other ones. Tan H, will bring you the hyperbolic tangent. Two degrees, you'll put in your angle in radians and it'll convert that to degrees. So 0.45 in radians is 25.78 degrees. Next, we've got two int exact. This will convert it to an integer, um, but it has to be a long in here. Whoa, long in here. Oh my gosh, a long in here. Uh, yeah, it'll convert along to an integer for you. If it's high, it'll just round down. Just a few more left. We've got two radians. You put your angle in degrees here. Say 90 degree angle is equal to 1.57 in radians. Ulp, I believe, will return the difference between a double and a float. So if you put in 6.4444, then it gets the difference. Here, let me try to bring up what it says for you. An ulp unit in the last place of a double value is a positive difference between this floating point value and the double value next larger in magnitude. So if you wanna use this formula, then you can do that with the ulp method. And finally, the last in the Java, oh, that was it. Ulp are the last ones in the Java math library. I'm just gonna put in my favorite one here. I really like the math.random. Super nice, super useful. But that was every uh, method in the Java math library. We went through e, pi, which are the sort of mathematical variables you use all the time. We've got absolute values. They've got trigonometry in here, exponents, Floors, hypotenuse, hyperbolic cosine, mins, maxes, scaling values, converting to degrees, converting to radians, and all these wonderful things inside the Java math library. So if you think that this was helpful, please leave a like. I make Java videos just like this all the time, so you can check out a bunch more. I think I have like close to 30, 40, a lot of Java videos just like this one. So you can check them out on my channel if you want to. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. I appreciate you being here. I'll see you later.